Drigo, lontano dagli occhi, accompagnata dal maestro Reverberi, Mary Hopkin.
What's it feel like to be married at last? It feels fine, thank you. What are you going to do now? Is it going to change your life much, do you think? I don't know, really. I've never been married before. <laughs> the wedding was about an hour late starting. Everyone got a bit worried. What happened? We were waiting for my brother, who was going to be best man, Mike. And uh, he was on British Railways, so he was a bit delayed because of the weather and stuff. Not a very nice day for you. Going away for a honeymoon? Maybe. We haven't talked about it yet, you know. It's just... Uh, it's, you know, we haven't really made any plans for a honeymoon. I think we will no, in a uh, few days. Right. Mrs. McCartney, congratulations. <laughs> what does it feel like to have just married the, with one of the most eligible bachelors in the world, with the envy of all the uh, ladies? Well, it feels great to be married. <laughs> Congratulations. How thank did you enjoy you. your wedding breakfast? Fine, thank you. Lovely, yeah. The, the wedding was delayed an hour. What happened there? Mike, brother Mike was uh, on British Railways again. So he got, he got held up and he was best man, so uh, we waited for him. When did you decide to get married, Paul? About a week ago. What prompted it? Uh, just, you know, so we decided to do it instead of thinking about it. Linda. How, how do you feel about it all? You, you're obviously terribly happy. How are you feeling this morning? Terribly happy. That sounds good enough. <laughs> I'm close. Uh, Lily, you've been described as a New York socialite. Does this mean you'll be spending much of your time in New York? No. Where will you be living? In London. In London. Mm. Paul, what about you? How do you feel to be the father yes, to I'm a six-year-old? You'll be living in London. How about being the father to a six-year-old child? It's terrible. Terrible. I hate it. I hate it. It's going to be a terrible burden. I do. It's horrible. Yeah. You're on the telly. You're on the telly. Come here. Come here. Are you going on a honeymoon anywhere? Uh, we we may get away in a couple of days, but I've got some work and stuff still to do. So that gets so in the way of the honeymoon. It does, yeah. Where where are you going to go to when you? I don't know. I haven't thought of anything yet. What's what are you going to do for the rest of the day? You're going to have a celebration later, perhaps. Uh, yeah, I'll take a bit of a rest first. It's been a bit hectic. Many of your the fans, the girls who were waiting outside the house and outside the hotel today, seem to be more than upset about this. What do you feel? Um, 
I don't know what I feel about that, you know. This is a well, problem you've met before. No, it's okay. I talk to I, I don't know. It's just difficult. That. What, do you, what do you say to that? What? Why are you girls crying? Why are you crying? Tell me why are you crying? Hmm? Control yourself a minute and tell me how you feel about him getting married. Oh, I, don't oh, I, I think it's, it's, oh, it's lovely. You shouldn't you two be at school today? Yeah, yeah. You're playing a bit of truant then. Oh, my oh, wife, why did she kill me? Well, what is upset you that he's getting married? Why? Because I know he's happy. You're just happy. Mm. What's it feel like to be married at last? It feels fine, thank you. What are you going to do now? Is it going to change your life much, do you think? I don't know, really. I've never been married before. <laughs> <laughs> the wedding was about an hour late starting. Everyone got a bit worried. What happened? We were waiting for my brother, who was going to be the best man, Mike. And uh, he was on British Railways, so he's a bit delayed because of the weather and stuff. Not a very nice day for you. Going away for a honeymoon? Maybe. We haven't talked about it yet, you know. It's just... Uh, it's you know, we haven't really made any plans for a honeymoon. I think we will no, in a uh, few days. Right. Mrs. McCartney, congratulations. <laughs> what does it feel like to have just married the, probably the, one of the most eligible bachelors in the world, be the envy of all the uh, ladies? Well, it feels great to be married. London, weepy time down south. The last bachelor beetle was no longer a bachelor. Paul McCartney married New Yorker Linda Eastman. He'd gone and been and done it at Marylebone Register Office. Paul's new stepdaughter, Heather, was among the advance guard who battled away through the shrieking, sobbing press of devoted fans who surged round the newlyweds as they made for their car. London bobbies and Fleet Street photographers tangled with tear-stained teenagers who were bidding farewell to the bachelordom of the Beatle who'd held out against marriage for so long.
passed the new threesome found sanctuary in their car, but it was oh so clear that Paul's plan for a quiet wedding had gone drastically wrong somewhere along the line. Exit the McCartney, a very popular group. What's it feel like to be married at last? It feels fine, thank you. What are you going to do now? Is it going to change your life much, do you think? I don't know, really. I've never been married before. <laughs> Do you think you're going to lose any fans because you're married now? No, of course not. I don't know, I don't know. You ask them now, not me. They won't. Will he? Yeah. Please, please, please. When you're ready, I've got to wait for you. Okay, go ahead. We're running. Well, why did you wait so long before you got married? I was thinking about it. <laughs> Looks like a good decision. Yes, it's all right. Why did you choose an American rather than an English girl, Paul? I happen to like this one. <laughs> nationality like American girls? Oh, it wasn't the nationality that swayed me, you know. What was it? The girl herself. <laughs> How did you get him? Thousands, of, millions of girls all over the world have been trying to get him for years. How did you get him? No comment. <laughs> How did he get? How did she get you? Persuasion, you know. She was persuaded. Yeah, gentle persuasion. Stepping out this old brown shoe Baby, I'm in love with you I'm so glad you came here You won't be the same now, I'm telling you You know you picked me up from worse And tried to drag me down when I see your smile replacing every thoughtless frown Got me escaping from this zoo Baby, I'm in love with you I'm so glad you came here it Won't be the same now, I'm telling you If I grow up, I'll be a singer Wearing rings on every finger don't worry what they or you say I live in love and maybe someday Who knows, baby, you may comfort me
like to do happies. Thank you. Stay in bed. Draw your hair. Bed piece. Hair piece. Hair piece, bed piece. Oh, yeah. This is an alternative to violence. Is to stay in bed and grow your hair. If you were Mrs. Higgins living in Rotterdam, and you announce to your local paper, I'm staying in bed for peace, I'm growing my hair for peace, they'd be interested. Instead of using violence, we can do it through smile and laughter.
Stay in bed. Bed piece. Hair piece. Hair piece, bed piece. Now, for Mrs. Hillary of West Bromwich, we'd like to do hair piece. Thank you. This is an alternative to violence, is to stay in bed and grow your hair. If you were Mrs. Higgins living in Rotterdam and you announced to your local paper, I'm staying in bed for peace, I'm growing my hair for peace, they'd be interested. Instead of using violence, we can do it through smile and laughter.
Hello, dog. It's beautiful. Isn't it? yeah. We're not afraid for dogs, right? No, no, no. It's just they take a lot of looking after. We'll think about you. Mm -hmm. Amsterdam. Okay. He's a lovely dog. Though. Thank you very yeah. much. Look, a little fly flitting about. <laughs> you know, we've proved to them that seven days and seven nights in any room isn't luxury. With however much fruit and flowers you've got, yeah, right, it is yeah. not luxury, it's heavy going. Especially as we see the press from 10 in the morning till 10 at night. And just, yeah, because uh, we want to get it over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes you laugh here in that thing, do you? It's time for it. Oh. Is it? Is it that night? What? 9.30. Oh, no, uh, good morning. As I was saying about the uh, baggage, you see, you get in this bag and you jump out the window. And Next thing you know, you got a policeman on your head. Mm. <laughs> John T. Yeah, that's okay. I, you don't know what? 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 Oh, here's the chance. You want one before I do. What? Yes, I haven't even got round to that. I uh, could have room service, please. John toast. I just tea. Um, what do you want? Coffee or tea? Tea. Tea. Uh, uh, two teas, please. Uh, yeah, 902. Oh, and some toast, yes. <laughs> Brown toast. Good morning, yes. Yeah, I know, and, and some toast. Brown toast, yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Thank you. Okay. Are you going to take him off me now? Yes, if you don't mind, because uh, it's one of the asylums, so you have to have it there. Oh, Thank I you I thought, very much. I thought you were giving it. They just did a plug then. Bye bye. Bye bye. What was it? They were not going to give it? No, no. You didn't want to give it though? No. I, I thought she gave it to you. I thought I, I was under that impression yes. that we were given a dog. What and then she gave us the dog and then went away. Well, that was very nice. There is no asylum for stray animals. Oh, they want money. Please stop this nonsense. This nonsense. Go home. We don't like people like you. <laughs> Go to a doctor to be normal. Are you getting this? It's great. <laughs> hey, fan. Go to a doctor to be normal. Well, we're, we're seeing a psychiatrist today, so maybe he'll fix us up. <laughs> Bloody marvellous.
So we do, we're not getting through on some level, as you, as you notice. Yeah. Yeah. The, the barriers are up there, you know. They're never going to come out of their bags. Oh, here's a guy who's got a pop group who's been getting advice from Brian Epstein. Oh. Yeah. He told me to contact John Lennon and ask him to take this young boy under his wing. Yeah. <laughs> and he asked me to quote an old Brian Epstein saying that <laughs> the very few you know, and he says, follow, the highest of the high, the lowest of the low, and nothing you mean. Brian never said that. Yeah. <laughs> we get calls about things like that all the time, you know, Brian's about Brian's talk. message. Yeah, well, yeah. let's see if the message comes. If Brian was talking to me, he'd talk direct, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. That article uh, in one of the papers in London, though, and it's saying that you had the acting ability and everything. You yeah, know. it was quite okay. So, yeah. yeah, but they, they were frightened, you know. They get frightened, the BBC. You know, you know, they, you know we're not having I mean, it's like, you know, it's just fear. You know. That's money. The, oh, maybe the money. No, it wasn't the money, you know, because they, they know the BBC always get you a bit cheaper anyway. We've done yeah. much work for the BBC for, right. for nothing, you know. We never get paid for the BBC. They still think it's an honor to be on television, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes on. Yeah. No, no, it's a pity there's not a good horse, you know, with a good name. We could have had a bet on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's the Grand National in England now. A big race. No, no, it's a horse race, a very big horse race, like the biggest. No, no, the Grand National, it's up in Liverpool, you know, there, but... Uh, I don't know when it is. I don't... It's one of them you're supposed to know when it's on, and they don't tell you, you know. You got that? Action for you. <laughs> Have we done all the mail today? No, no, not yet. Oh, yeah, animals. No check for the animals. <laughs> oh, never mind. I wish, you, I wish you were showing it on Tuesday. I might come. Yeah, book on it. The, they're showing it on Monday night, though. I mean, we could go there, you know, and yes, do, yes, do baggism from there. Yes, yes. Hey, listen, uh, we, we just might come, where, we might come there on Monday night. What time's it on? 10.25. Uh, yeah, well, we do the press conference at the hotel, okay? Not, in the, not at the airport, not so, the airport. As, so as we can prepare. Okay, I mean, so tell them that we'll, be, we'll do the press conference at the airport, uh, you know, half an hour after we settle in. O okay? Yeah, I think it's better there, don't you? Yes. No, do you need an ex trumpet player? No. I'll fix him up with the MJQ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, he found a lot of drummer. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> come on, here you go. No, he says Ringo Starr, <laughs> but he's very hello. He's a spitball, he says. Yeah, I know damn well it isn't. Go on. Oh, vaguely, yeah, yeah. You swam over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from a bridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. It's a happy place. <laughs> well, look, we're not, we're not doing. No, I don't agree, because uh, the point is uh, we're only talking to press because that's the best way of communicating. You know? And if we see everybody that wants to see us, you know, even if they jumped off a bridge, it's going to slow it down. It doesn't work. You know? <laughs> I did that before. That's for presidents and queens, you know. OK, so, I mean, this is as near as you get this time. Maybe next time. OK. Bye-bye. Ringo. Yeah. Oh, she talks English. Is it an autograph? We're very busy, you know, and we can't see all the fans, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do the job we're here to do. Okay, so I'll give you an autograph. Yvonne, is it? With a Y or an I? Uh, Yvonne. Yvonne. Uh, I? Uh, Greek I. Greek I, okay. I don't know. Well, what's that, a Y? W. Yeah. Y. Oh, yeah, Y, okay.
Yeah, it was good. Thank okay. you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah, she'll just say hello to you. Hey, that's beautiful, yeah, man. That's the, that's Fagism from... Hello? So Hi, we go to... Uh, are you? Austria. So, you see... You Can know you come? Yeah. Yeah, that's when. You know Monday night. Monday, Monday, Monday in the yeah, afternoon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And we do the bagism from there. And then, of course, all the London people think, why, why Austria? And they'll all come over. And our film's on on Monday night, and we can watch that on TV. Well, I'll arrange it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. That's good, you know. <laughs> Expeditionary the Dunkirk, Christ, the wow. Eighth Army throughout the Western Desert. He really went through it. Yeah. But he's saying, you know, he believes it. What we're doing, that's great. You know. <laughs> you stand up and see you. Yes, that's it. No, well, it goofed my my other slip when Evelyn said the things to Japanese. Yeah. For the threat, they didn't send it back. So oh, I had yeah. to get a new one all the time. Yeah. No, well, I think I'm good to September. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah. You have to be up for it. Come back. Yeah, right next time. If you got to hit the doctor, you know what, man. You know what, really need to go to the doctor. You should get the stamp in. You got to do it right in the, in the airport. Yeah. Oh, uh, Cheryl. C-H-E-R-Y-L. Thanks. Hey, we haven't got a uh, hairpiece written up here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very busy day, actually. Yeah. I mean, every yeah. day is like yeah. this. Okay. Okay, great to see you. I'm going to end this part. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Have a good time tonight. Right. Yeah. I hope so. Okay. okay. Right, good to see you. Bye-bye <laughs> yeah. again. Yeah, we'll be here till Tuesday, so. Okay, well, I'll yeah. be here till good Monday. Again. Okay, right. we'll be good. here. Okay. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye right. again. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. See you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Right, come See on. See you next time. Okay, do that. Success. Do that. We'll be here. Yeah. Imagine it. Yeah, I'll come up and chat with you tomorrow. Okay. Good. Uh, what's Where's the, the hair piece gone? Uh, the, 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 actually, I, I don't know much about many other musicians, you know, because I mean, there's the difference between the only bag I can put people in, the audience and the musician. Most musicians, you know, have time to listen very infrequently to music but their own, you know, and I'm one of them, you know, I listen, I listen now and then. And the only sort of so-called jazz people that I really know, the MJQ, because they're yeah. so famous, and uh, the one I went to see was Roland Kerr, because I thought he had something going there, and uh, the only whole LP of jazz I've ever listened to was Ascension by John Coltrane. You know, jazz is just uh, last generation's music, that's all, and some of it can break through to, uh, pop or electronic or whatever. I don't think there's any barrier really, you know, in music or art or anything. And there's some, they've, some of them have done great things, you know, but there's very few of them that are here now, you know. <laughs> they could have stole the dog. <clears throat> It's rather sort of really swinging, though, <laughs> don't you think, yeah. sir? <laughs> the thought of the long-haired beetle entering the 19th century sanctuary. <laughs> When is the show on? Great. 
Oh, this Monday. I wish we could see it from Amsterdam. No, no, I see, we can't leave the hotel till Tuesday. Oh, well, we made a film called Rape that's on Austrian TV next Monday. came to Baggies on the night after we'd been talking to you about communicating outside or inside. And uh, we couldn't sleep with on such a good buzz, you know. And we were talking about uh, going through what we were doing here, you know. And watching the sky. And watching the sky. And it was dark, so we didn't see each other. And we just started talking about what we were doing together in the past and why it wasn't the same as now, although it was leading up to now. Now, she'd been doing literally bag events. I've done one with her at the Albert Hall, where she'd appear in a black bag and uh, at, a, at an event, you know. And, it, and the Beatles were in a black bag by being in hotels, creating myths, you know, that the people never actually saw you in the flesh. Or, and they didn't have that confusion. You had more power being a myth. And you had total communication being locked up in a hotel. But you didn't have it when you were on the street. Or even with the interviewers, almost, you didn't have it. Because all they saw was Beatle John Lennon. Oh, he's got glasses. Oh, he looks older than I thought. Oh. Isn't she small? Isn't she pretty? You know, and all that. That's the reaction we got. So as we were thinking this, it suddenly went... And we just both thought the same thing, you know? Bagism. That uh, we'd both been performing bagism separately before. She literally, and me not literally. I mean, literally, as a, a hotel is a black bag. Yes, And so philo philosophically, we were, we were performing. Yeah. So then we decided that uh, the next conference in London, when we arrived there, We'll be in a white bag. We've done one white bag event at the Albert Hall, but we'd be in a white bag and then explain bagism, you know, and it also explains to people saying, why are you doing it in a hotel? You should get out more. Because if, uh, if you're talking to me, even though you know I'm John Lennon and I'm in a bag, you can't be discussing uh, what I wear. Only, the only surprise for you or the hang-up will only be that it is a bag talking or, oh, John Lennon is in a bag and Yoko Ono's in a bag. But after that, all you can have is what we say or what, whatever, feel, whatever reaction you get from the, from the bag. And you can't have preconceived ideas or, or, you know, I mean, if it was somebody else for, that, did it, that did it, somebody else communicating, but you wouldn't know whether it was black, white, woman or man or anything. You wouldn't be sure. So you could only, you'd have total communication, that, that, which is what we had lying in bed in the dark. We couldn't see each other and we weren't looking at each other. But the idea came just bang. And we both thought of it at the same time. You know, total communication, bag. And then, of course, we came up with the word bagism to uh, put a tag on it, you know, to put it in a bag. Because we were always explaining ourselves, I'd say, what's the difference between when we met and when before we met? That I was in a pop bag and tending to go around in circles, and she was in an avant-garde bag, you know, just like that. And intellectually, all the artists, all the pop musicians, everybody's saying, uh, there's no barriers, there's no barriers. And there we all are going round and round in these circles. No barriers, we're not in a bag, man, we're not in a bag. But of course, everybody's in a bag. So we got out of those bags into a bigger bag. And so that's what bagism is, you know. And it's total communication. I mean, it's communication way up, up there, you know. It's after you leave the body. It's soul communication entirely, you know. Some of them are more equal than others, as you know. Yes. I'd like to... Uh...